Well, good morning. I'm Alan Dorway, and I'm the pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Everett. And yes, as my normal, I'm a little bit early to this Facebook Live worship that we're going to be doing uh, this morning. So uh, we are a little bit early, so I'm going to give us a couple minutes for everyone to join. Uh, this is my second attempt during this uh, Stay Home, Stay Healthy directive that we're following. And today I'm going to be broadcasting from my house, uh, and it's going to be exciting. You never know when the the dog might jump into my lap or whatever else might happen. But we took the dog for a walk this morning, so hopefully he's exhausted and we're just gonna have a good time of worship together. So we're just gonna wait for everyone to get on. Uh, please, if you want, you can go to our church website and download or open up the bulletin uh, for today and follow along. Uh, I'm gonna be singing some songs this morning and I hope that you join me online because otherwise you're just gonna hear my my voice, which is not going to be that exciting for you, but uh, anyhow, good morning. It's 10 o'clock, so we are going to begin. I'd like to welcome you again to the Facebook Live edition of worship from the First Presbyterian Church of Everett. Today I'm streaming from my house, I'm not at church. I'm at home, but we are going to get creative next week for Palm Sunday. We're still going to be streaming. It's going to be live at 10 a.m. on our Facebook page for Palm Sunday. But we're going to have some uh, new things that we're going to do. We're going to try to do some stuff this week to prepare us for Palm Sunday. So stay tuned. More information will be coming out. We encourage you to get updates as we uh, continue to move through this quarantine and this self-isolation. Uh, we're going to put up as much information as we can on our website. So please check that out frequently. Now, if you're able uh, and you have your bulletins with you, join me in our call to worship. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope my soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its inequities. We're going to sing our first hymn. Uh, Seek You First is an easy one, and I'm actually going to try to play guitar with this one. So um, get your singing voices out with me. Last week, we were blessed to use 20 play prayers to pray during this pandemic from Jen, Pollock, Michelle. We prayed and reflected on the first 10. 
but today we are going to pray through the rest, and there's the link for this entire prayer at the end of the bulletin. So let us pray. For Christian missionaries throughout the world, especially in areas with high rates of infection, God provide them with words of hope and equip them to love and serve those around them. Lord, hear our prayer. For workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, God, keep them from panic and inspire your church to generously support them. Lord, hear our prayer. For families with young children at home for the foreseeable future, God, help mothers and fathers to partner together creatively for the care and flourishing of their children. For single mothers and fathers, grow their networks of support. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents who cannot stay home from work but must find care for their children, God, present them with creative solutions. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of regular therapies and treatments that, ma that must now be postponed, God, help them to stay patient and positive. Lord, hear our prayer. For business leaders making difficult decisions that affect the lives of their employees, God, give these women and men wisdom and help them to lead self-sacrificially. Lord, hear our prayer. For pastors and church leaders faced with the challenges of social distancing, God, help them to creatively imagine how to pastor their congregants and love their cities well. Lord, hear our prayer. For college and university students whose courses of study are changing, whose placements are canceled, whose graduation is uncertain, and we pray for our high school students, middle school, and elementary students as well. God, show them that while life is uncertain, their trust can be found in you. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians in every neighborhood, community, and city, may your Holy Spirit inspire us to pray, to give, to love, to serve, and to proclaim the gospel, that the name of Jesus Christ might be glorified around the world. Lord, hear our prayer. For frontline healthcare workers, we thank you for the vocational call to service. Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue with God, keep them safe and healthy. Keep their families safe and healthy. Lord, help them to be knowledgeable about the diagnosis and treatment of this disease, as well as the changing protocols. God, help them to stay clear-minded in the midst of surrounding panic. Lord, deliver them from anxiety, for, for their loved ones. God, give them compassion for every patient in their care. Lord, provide for them financially, especially if they fall ill and unable to work. God, help Christians in healthcare to exhibit extraordinary peace so that many would ask about the reason for their hope. Give them opportunities to proclaim the gospel. Lord, we trust that you are good and do good. Teach us to be your faithful people in this time of global crisis. Help us to follow in the footsteps of our faithful shepherd, Jesus, who laid down his life for the sake of love. Glorify his name as you equip us with everything needed for doing your will. Now with one voice we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us, into, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, join uh, me if you're able, and we're gonna. I'm gonna sing this or attempt to sing, "The Glory Be to the Father" a cappella. So join on your own in, so you drown me out. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Good job. <laughs> Our scripture this morning comes from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, 
And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then God said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put my breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. As I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. And then God said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Now, I like zombie movies. I've said it before, but now being at home with Vicki, we watched all of The Walking Dead, that, all the seasons that were on Netflix. And I, please note, zombie movies contain blood, gore, and violence, and I don't recommend them for anyone. Now, the reason I enjoy zombie movies is because it's not about the zombies. Everyone can tell who's a zombie. There are people or shadows of people who walk between life and death. They are reduced from humans to killing them. And we shall all know by now that to kill a zombie, please aim for the head. Zombies are easy to figure out. It's the human interaction surrounding zombies that fascinates me. Who do you trust? Who is willing to compromise their beliefs or morals to survive? How do we rebuild community? What makes a family or an alliance? Who's in or out in this need to survive? These are just a few of the questions people wrestle with in a post-apocalyptic world. One of the characters in The Walking Dead leads a group of people at a place called the Kingdom. His name is King Ezekiel. I have enjoyed his character arc. He's a unique person, he has a tiger as a pet, he's charismatic, he's a thespian, and when another character, Carol, calls him out, he tells her the truth and reminds her sometimes you have to fake it to make it. Now he's not without his faults, Yet one scene I think defines him is his speech before a fateful battle. Again, it's that idea of which group of people do you trust and align with. And before this battle, he comes to his people and he knows that everyone's going to make it. It's going to be difficult. And he reflects, today I smile. In a world turned upside down, you need people with a radical vision of hope. Our world has been turned upside down and it hit me this past week, past week I needed to turn off my news feeds because those were not bringing me hope. I preached a series in February about the core facets of the church, and my second one was as followers of Jesus, we share hope to each other and our world. Hope is not something we hold on to as ours alone, but we share it with others and we support each other through life. We share hope with our world, trusting in the presence of Jesus to be with us, to guide us and deliver us through all the insecurities and trials that we go on in our world. And within two months of that sermon, we find ourselves in need of more hope. Hope that this, this illness plaguing us, the coronavirus, is not the final word. Hope for those families and individuals and communities who are suffering. Hope for our doctors, nurses, hospital workers who are risking while following their gracious call to care for us. Hope for the daily changing of information, confusion, and stress over making decisions for groups or ourselves on the fly. Hope connecting us even in solitude and through our social distancing. 
Heck, for me this week, I needed some hope to see beyond politics and to stop judging those who are not taking this pandemic seriously. I need hope. We need hope together. And our text from Ezekiel speaks to hope. I think I've only preached on these verses maybe once before, so as part, and this was part of the Sunday lectionary, so I was intrigued to wrestle with these verses this week. How does a valley of dry bones give us hope or help to see us see new life? The imagery is not just of some bones, but a valley of scattered, dry, left there a long time, life not present, chaotic, dead bones. This hopeless, lifeless, and purposeless valley Can it give life? Now first, God grabs Ezekiel. The message takes what we read in NRSV. We read, the hand of the Lord came upon me. And the message reminds us it's really that God grabs Ezekiel and affirms this powerful calling. God grabs, reaches out and grabs Ezekiel, moving him to a valley full of bones. Now commentators struggle with, is this a literal valley? They try to pinpoint that in Palestine, or is this a metaphorical vision? And I'm not sure if that matters, because God does not ask Ezekiel about location, direction, or battle. God asks, can these bones live? Wouldn't our first answer be no? Are you kidding me, Lord? These bones have been left out in the sun for a long time. There's no connective tissue. The animals and birds have done their damage. No one even took a moment to properly bury these people. And if... They were people. All these bones are scattered to the point where it's a horrible jigsaw puzzle. Now, we would be practical. We would be honest. We would agree that in this case, despair might be rational. And hope or possibility of new life sounded absurd. No hope, no life, no newness, no way, Lord, in this valley. Now, Ezekiel is a prophet during the Babylon captivity. The king was blinded. The people killed Temple in Jerusalem destroyed, the rest were transported away, and the few remaining in the land were not able to defend or define themselves. As two, as two commentators note, a nation carried into captivity ceases to be a nation, and the return of any people from the borders of any conqueror who have captured and deported the whole would have been viewed throughout that wor- the world of that era as totally unimaginable. I mean, that's total devastation, and we would agree. But God grabbed Ezekiel and brought him there with a question, and his answer is, only you know, Lord. Ezekiel moved beyond what we see, how we may assess the situation, to deferring to God who knows if new life can come into impossible situations. And at this point, the second way God brings life is by giving words to be prophesied. God gives not just words, but speaks a command in the, through the valley, through the prophet. God gave the word to Ezekiel. Ezekiel did not need to come up with a a prayer, with the words to say God gave them to him. Where there is no life, Ezekiel preaches what he is told, and there begins a rustling sound, a sound reverberating through the valley as bones come together, bone to bone with sinews and tissues forming until there was a valley of people, yet there was no breath in them. After these bones formed bodies, they were still dead. They needed the Spirit to enlighten them. So lastly, Ezekiel prophesied again, and God's Spirit filled the bodies, and they stood up in a vast multitude. And God tells Ezekiel, this is how the nation feels, like dry bones without hope. But God is doing a new thing and will raise the people again. Verse 14 ends, and I paraphrase, I will put my Spirit in you, says the Lord, and you shall live, and I will redeem your nation. And you shall know that I am the Lord who speaks and acts in the present. God knows how the nation, carried off into exile with self-esteem crushed, God knows how they feel. There are plenty of times when we think God does not know. God is God, and so how could we, so how could he know the way I feel? Maybe during some low moments we think, well, God is surely busy with someone else. My needs are just not that important. But scripture tells us God knows. God formed us and knows our possibilities and potential in life. God walks with us. God sent Jesus, God in the flesh, to teach and die for us. And the Spirit is not far away, but as close and as personal as our breath. God hears the cries of people in Egypt, in Babylon, and still today. God does not hold back. The Spirit lives in us, and we are redeemed. And that is good news, that God is in control.
Yes, even today, for the prophet Ezekiel, as the people were beaten and broken, God showed up. In the first century, Palestine was occupied Romans by the Romans, and Jesus showed up. Our world has ups and downs. We've struggled, fought, and had various outcomes, and the Holy Spirit shows up. Today, we're upside down. We're concerned with our health, our safety, our grocery shopping habits, and we're overrun by news and information. God shows up. New life is found because we've all had an experience where God grabbed us. God walked with us through the valley of death and we made it to the other side. God brought us calm as our world was falling apart. God picked us up from our sin and set our feet once again on solid ground. And in those moments, rather than argue or put up a defense or fight, all we said was, only you, God, know what's going to happen. We came up to that wall and our only response was, not on our own could we get through this. But God, you know. Whatever comes next, you know. Humility allows us to speak the words God has given us. Ezekiel did not need to do any more or less than what God told him to do. In the fourth chapter of Acts, it's after Pentecost, Peter and John have healed a man and are preaching about Jesus. And, and I just love this scene. They're brought before the Sanhedrin and they're asked to explain what they've been doing. And Peter shares, and in verse 13 we read, when they, that's the Sanhedrin, saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished, and they took note that these people had just been with Jesus. Peter and John were ordinary people who shared and testified as the Spirit gave them words to do so. We do not need to worry about our schooling or our words God gives them to us. Now, just to be fair, education, learning, and knowledge are assets, but our job is to testify to the hope that Christ has brought to our lives and speak honest words of faith. Faith, and I would add hope, sees possibilities of life in what, in what looks like only to be death. <clears throat> Once we take hold of hope, the more we share hope, as we are open to the hope that God gives, then we know the power of Jesus who stands with us in all situations. And we need to claim and bring that hope today. We're being grabbed by God in a new way right now. We are not seeing a valley of dry bones, but we are seeing people holding on to fear, hoarding resources, suffering, feeling isolated. And God is asking us to speak, proclaim in this valley that God is here to bring hope to each other, that we're not alone. The Spirit is bringing us, holds us, connects us. Know that God's Spirit is bringing new life in these times. And yes, we might not get back to normal, whatever normal is, but Jesus does not work in normal. Jesus crushed death and calls us to follow. We can live the promise that God saves, Jesus redeems, and the Spirit is working. And this brings me back to zombies. The verses are not about dead walking again, of humanity restored just the way we were. We see through Ezekiel, it's about God showing up to redeem. God is not distant. He acts in the present with amazing love, grace, and restoring spirit. God revived and restored a nation, and that's what God is doing now. We too will come out of our homes and reconnect, but we don't have to wait. We don't have to be zombies without heart now. We don't have to be one of the herd and walk around without purpose or drive. It sounds trite, but calling each other, writing, using technology to reach out to those around us is life-giving. Being present for our families and those in our homes by putting aside whatever's distracting us to be present is a redemptive act. We resist the temptation to lie down and die because we know Jesus has restored us and brings us hope to encouraging, that, encouraging us, each other, preparing us to see the new life that is growing around us, to be on the lookout because we've slowed down for the Spirit's active work, like us treating the grocery store's employees as human, like others sewing masks for the hospital or bringing treats and food for them, like saying hello as we walk by each other on the street or on the opposite side of the sidewalk, like buying needed items for those who stay in their home due to compromised immune systems, like helping children complete homework or draw or allowing us to be creative and rest 
be restored from our un unsustainable lifestyles. These and so much more are where we stay together, where we see the Spirit's active work, because we are our neighbor's keeper, and the Spirit is here. So to end, I'm adapting King Ezekiel's speech from that fateful moment with his people, again on the eve of a pivotal battle. Because occasionally when we are facing zombies, enemies, dark days, or isolations, we need a good speech. We need God to grab us, proclaim new life to us, and fill us with the Spirit, because God shows up today. So friends, we face dire challenge and change. Our lives, our way of life, it hangs in the balance. A fragile glass standing on a wire high above the asphalt. As we pray for not one drop of rain to push us over the edge into fear. And into this no unknown, I smile. We will fight isolation and the unknown, and we will suffer, and yet, I smile. We shall face this virus head on, not cornered into a hoarding mass as desperate people tend to do. We shall overcome all of this together. This is our charge this day. God shows up. As is our motto, the Spirit is present, and yet, I smile. We will not leave our loved ones but traverse a dangerous road as renewed people, rushing out into this day with peace, and I smile. For we will find glory from the rock of struggle we are going through. We will honor and protect this, this bastion of life in a land of the dead, and we will win. We trust God, we will win. I smile, I laugh, I rejoice this day, for on this day we are joined in purpose and vision of hope and new life. We are of singular heart and mind of Christ. On this day, we are one. We are one. We are one and God has shown up. Amen. <sighs> All right. But now we're gonna sing the doxology to bring us to our blessing and our close. <clears throat> Again, this will be a cappella, so I ask that you join with me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Friends, it is difficult not being together in worship. It is easy to slip into believing that there is no hope and that we will never get through this. But we're not in control. So we can release our fears of whatever is or what will be normal to Jesus. God is doing a new thing. We do not fear death or tomorrow because of the grace and love that we find in Christ. The Holy Spirit is with us now, present, we are not alone. We bring and witness to a greater hope than we can ever imagine. So by, be encouraged by the grace, hope, and love of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I sign off, blessings, and we love you. <laughs>